The following is presented using funding provided by the Ohio Department of Higher Education to the University of Dayton Center for Cybersecurity and Data Intelligence in its role as Regional Programming Center for the Ohio Cyber Range Institute. The University of Dayton is a top-tier Catholic university dedicated to advancing knowledge, educating future leaders, and serving the common good. The Ohio Cyber Range Institute advances an integrated approach to cybersecurity education, workforce and economic development, and cyber-related fields throughout the state. It is sponsored by the Ohio Department of Higher Education and the Ohio Adjutant General's Department Office of the Ohio National Guard, and is headquartered at the University of Cincinnati. Hello, I'm Dr. Rusty Baldwin, Director of Research at the University of Dayton Center for Cybersecurity and Data Intelligence. Today I'm going to be showing you a tool that can help small and medium-sized businesses assess the cybersecurity of their networks and computers. By that I mean a tool that will help you identify what kind of cyber risks your business is facing based on how your network and IT installation is configured and the process controls you may or may not have in place. This tool will enable you to assess track and take steps to lower that risk in a systematic way. In 2019, the U.S. Small Business Administration estimated that 43% of all cyber attacks targeted small businesses and that the average cost to a small to medium-sized business to clean up after being hacked was almost $149,000. A cyber insurance carrier found that 60% of small businesses go out of business after an attack. So the problem is real and the consequences are high for not taking steps to lower that risk. That being said, it's a common problem among businesses of all sizes that there's simply not enough time or personnel to perform all the network and computer security tasks that need to be done given all the threats we face in our modern economic environment. The problem is especially felt by small and medium-sized businesses who often don't have any dedicated IT staff, much less IT security staff. Unfortunately, hackers and cyber criminals know this too and are on the lookout for it. So what can be done? There's a free tool available that can help businesses document, assess, prioritize, and track progress towards securing their infrastructure. The tool is called the Cybersecurity Evaluation Tool, or CSET for short. It was developed by the Department of Homeland Security and is absolutely free. You can find the link to it by Googling DHS CSET, that is DHS CSET. CSET incorporates various checklists based on the latest security standards and best practices and allows you to graphically document and annotate your IT network and computer configuration if you choose. It uses a simple survey questionnaire to determine which standards best apply to your situation and has an extensive reporting capability. That said, the tool does not automate the assessment process. It will still require expertise, time, and effort to accomplish, and there's really no way to eliminate that completely. But now the effort can be guided and informed by the latest cybersecurity practices and standards rather than going about trying to secure your infrastructure haphazardly or, worse yet, ignoring the problem altogether. Let's take a short tour of the tool to get started. As you can see, I've already brought up the tool which runs from a web browser and has a very nice user interface. You begin by clicking the Start a New Assessment button. Now to save some time, I'm going to be using a previous assessment I've prepared, but I'll be going through all the same steps and screens as I would with a brand new assessment. We are at the Prepare tab in which we fill out the basic assessment information, including assessment name, facility, and any contacts you may wish to record here. These can be individuals who may be needed to provide information for the assessment or to review it. But anyone can be listed here as desired. 
I'm not going to take the time to fill this out, but you'll find that most of the fields in the form are optional, which is very convenient since you can fill them out as you get the information. Now, one thing that you will want to fill out initially is the demographics information. Your choice here will drive what questions you will be asked as you use CSET. Let's look at the different sector choices available. As you can see, it's quite a list. Initially, it looks like many of these are focused more on industrial sectors, but in fact, the commercial facilities will be suitable for many businesses in other sectors. And the government facilities sector covers all levels of government to include local, tribal, territorial, and state governments. Many of these sectors have unique standards and regulations that guide particular cybersecurity practices. Once you select a sector, then you can narrow the tool down to a particular industry. Let's look at a couple of these using the commercial and government facility sectors as examples. Let's go ahead and choose the commercial sector and retail industry. The next two questions set the scope and depth of the assessment by asking you to estimate the gross value of assets you're protecting and the level of effort that will be devoted to the assessment. You might want to uh, think about you know, exactly what is the value of all your uh, cybersecurity assets, and you can see that many of them will be able to be less than a million dollars. Uh, and then the scope of the assessment will range from a couple of hours to more than you know, three or four weeks. Next, we come to the security assurance level. This section, as it says here, is used to determine the number and rigor of the questions. The current security assessment level is shown here, and this is updated based on what you select below. Now, there are three security assurance methodologies that can be used. Simple, general risk-based, and one based on guidance contained in NIST 60 or FIPS 199 standards. We will use the simple methodology, but I encourage you to explore the others to see if they're more appropriate for your situation. Next, we come to the stream that gives us some idea of the number of requirements we'll be evaluated against and the number of questions we'll be answering. Remember, all this is based on our responses thus far. You can see in the upper right of the screen, we have the number of requirements and the number of questions that we're going to be answering. We are also given the opportunity to select particular standards that may apply to our industry or ones that we may be required to meet. CSET also provides the option to perform a basic assessment by clicking on the highlighted, I want to do a basic assessment instead text. Of course, this will not give you the detailed assessment you would get otherwise, but can be useful if you're doing a first look at your organization or only have an extremely limited amount of time. Next, we come to the Diagram tab. With this part of CSET, you'll have the opportunity to create a network diagram that describes your network. There are an extensive number of templates available, which we will see here in just a minute. One caveat though, this part of CSET has very limited export and import capabilities. And if you load a new template, the system will clear or wipe away what's currently there, so be careful. Okay, with that, let's take a quick look at the diagram tool in CSET. Upon entering the diagram tool for the first time, you will be presented with a template selection panel now, these will not reflect your network exactly, but they can be customized to reflect your network. Annotations can be added as well. Let's pick one of these templates. We'll use the radio template. I'm going to zoom in on this a bit so you can see the many different icons that are available to describe your network. I'm going to select this external firewall here and show how you can customize it. 
The most useful tab to document your particular network will be the Properties tab here. In it, you can change the label. Let's change the label here to My Firewall. You can also add the IP address for the device as well as the host name. The more time you spend on this, the more specific the assessment will be with respect to your particular environment. In summary, CSET provides a way to document your network visually so that it reflects the system you're actually assessing. This diagramming tool does not have to be used for an assessment, but if you do use it, the assessment will include questions about equipment and devices included in the diagram. Therefore, it can be quite valuable. Let's move to the next tab now. In this tab, the actual assessment work is documented. There are two modes in which the assessment can be answered, questions mode and requirements mode. The questions mode queries you about various aspects of your security controls and then uses your responses to determine whether a requirement is satisfied. The requirements mode displays the exact wording of the standard to respond to. Either can be selected and the results tab, which we'll go over later, will be based on whichever is selected. In addition, if you did use the network diagramming capability, there will be additional questions based on components that are present in the diagram. As you are answering questions, there are several icons available. Let's go over these. The detail icon provides additional details on the item being assessed. This supplemental icon, as the name suggests, provides additional information, often in the form of definitions or explanations about the nature of the controls. With the comments icon, this is where you can add your own notes or site-specific comments on the requirement or question. The documents icon allows you to link documents you may have to the response. These documents might be evidence, for instance, substantiating your response. In the references icon, there are links to references related to the current question or requirement. The observations icon is an area for actions that need to be taken or changed with respect to the current question or requirement. A report which includes what are called tear-out sheets can be automatically generated based on these observations and used for individual task assignments. The feedback icon is an area for input on the requirement itself or perhaps the way in which it was satisfied. This could be used by someone reviewing your work. And speaking of a reviewer, the reviewed toggle button indicates that this particular response and supporting documentation has been reviewed by perhaps, say, a third party that you've designated. As you can see, this can involve quite a bit of time to properly assess, document, and resolve issues identified along the way. Let's move to the Results tab now. The data presented when you select the results tab will be based on whether the questions mode or requirements mode was selected. The analysis dashboard gives you a summary of your responses with respect to standards compliance and also network components if you included a network diagram. Those areas that need further work to bring them into compliance are shown next in a section called topped ranked categories. This is followed by a chart summarizing the percentage of your responses, whether that be a yes response, a no response, not applicable, and so on. Additional screens provide different views and summaries of that data. 
A quite valuable uh, part of CSET is the report section, which gives you a leg up in documenting these results via a number of useful templates, including a summary report, cybersecurity plan, security detail report, and observation tearout sheets. Of course, these are just starting points, but they pull the data from what you've already entered, so they're quite valuable in that they capture and present the statistics you've already input into CSET. Finally, the resource library provides a wealth of information on standards, guidance, and even procurement language for use in contracts. Small and medium-sized businesses have unique challenges with respect to cybersecurity. The CSET tool provides a means to distill the myriad of standards and guidance available into an actionable methodology to assess and improve the cybersecurity of your organization. I sincerely hope you found this overview useful. Please be sure to make use of the other resources we have available at the Center for Cybersecurity and Data Intelligence. Take care and God bless. If you are interested in learning more about this content, please contact the UD Center for Cybersecurity and Data Intelligence by email at udaytoncyber at udayton.edu and we will forward your interest to the speaker.